Sporting CP's academy is famous for teaching some of the greatest Portuguese talents and in the early 2000s it seemed like they had found gold, as many names were rising into stardom. Nowadays, once this story is heard, everyone thinks of Cristiano Ronaldo, but back then, Ronaldo struggled to shine as another wonder kid constantly stole his spotlight. That kid was Ricardo Quaresma. Quaresma was so technically gifted that anyone who laid their eyes on him instantly realized how much he was worth. He would dribble past defenders effortlessly, looking like he couldn't be bothered by their presence, but as much as he might have seemed calm, deep down there was a problem. Quaresma seemed to have an attitude, constantly getting into fights and rebelling against his coaches. At the time, Portuguese newspapers attributed this issue to his upbringing, as he was born in one of the most difficult neighborhoods in Portugal, where he was raised by a single mother amongst drugs and violence. Quaresma would eventually refute these statements, saying that what he saw as a kid only made him want to distance himself from that sort of behavior even more, famously claiming that he never smoked a cigarette, drank alcohol or did drugs in his life. So what went wrong? Personally, as someone who's been a fan of him since I was a little kid, I'd blame the discrimination he suffered from his peers due to his upbringing. You will frequently hear Quaresma mention in his interviews how he was blamed if something ever went missing at his school, just because he was a part of a cultural minority. That can truly damage someone and cause the person to rebel and develop trust issues. Regardless of whatever problems he attracted his way, Ian Cristiano would be like blood in the water for the big sharks of European football. Their partnership would dazzle everyone as it seemed like they could predict each other's every move, which might have just been right as they had known each other since they were kids playing at the academy. Unfortunately, they would be separated as Manchester United would take Ronaldo and Barcelona would take Quaresma, whose sporting had to sell as they were going through massive financial issues at the time. From that moment on, their paths would be massively different, with the only thing keeping them together being their friendship, which still lasts to this very day. At Barcelona, Quaresma would share his debut with Ronaldinho, as they were signed on the same year, and both would manage to score on their very first match. He would keep shining throughout the season, still impressing everyone with his technique, but his personality would create problems very soon. He would fight with the manager constantly, and it would get to the point where he would tell the press that he would not play for Barcelona as long as Frank Rijkaard was the coach. As you might imagine, these words were taken very literally by the club's board, who would then quickly sell him. And just like that, Quaresma was back in Portugal, this time playing for FC Porto, in a transaction which saw Deco going the other way. Once again, he would start on a high note, scoring the only goal as Porto beat rival Benfica to win the Super Cup on his debut, and then scoring in the European Super Cup as, mind you, Porto had won the Champions League the previous year. He would stay there for four years, winning the league in three of those, which led to him becoming loved by the fans and ascending to club legend status. José Mourinho, who had witnessed from afar his progress at his previous club, would decide to give him another chance at playing for an European giant, as he would sign for Inter Milan. By now, Quaresma had turned being decisive in his first match for a new club a habit, as one of his famous trivellas would give the win to Inter on his debut. Mourinho would eventually complain that Quaresma was the only player in the team who played for himself and had no team spirit. This would lead to him being loaned out to Chelsea during the winter transfer market. Quaresma told the press that he felt sad at Inter, and that he felt much better once he left for Chelsea. Regardless, he only started once for the team in the half season he spent there. He would come back to Inter and that would be the defining moment for his career, as he would once again struggle, not playing a single full match for Inter, despite doing wonders on the pitch. To further hurt his confidence, Inter would manage to win the treble that year, despite barely utilizing Quaresma. It had been almost a decade of attempts to get Quaresma in the mindset needed to shine for a major team, and despite becoming a cult hero for football fans, admired for his unique playstyle and trademark skilled moves such as a Trivella, the world and even Quaresma had lost hopes of seeing him make it on the big stage. 
So, he took another step back and moved to the Turkish league to play for Besiktas, where he would quickly become a fan favorite. It seemed like he had found a place where he could finally play on his own terms, and just as it seemed like an happy ending, he would have an altercation with his manager, Carlos Carvalhal, as he did not like that he subbed him off, telling the manager that the only reason the club signed him was because Quaresma told them to give him a chance, as the two already knew each other. This would end with Quaresma throwing a water bottle at the coach and getting his contract terminated as punishment. He would quickly leave for Al Ali, which would turn out to be a massive mistake, as the club would be so disappointed by his performances that they would let him out of his contract months after he arrived. Quaresma was closing in on becoming 30 years old, and he was out of a contract. Despite being known worldwide for his talents, the world had decided that he was a lost cause, not worth fighting over. Quaresma had hit rock bottom, and as it seemed all could be over, he turned to the one place where everyone loved him, the place where he was still seen as a hero. FC Porto would sign him. And this is where the story strays away from the average story of a player who failed to stand up to the standards the world has set for him, because 2014 was the moment of Quaresma's redemption. Despite having been a major figure for Portugal's under-17 squad, who won the Euros in 2000, Quaresma was very unlucky internationally during his first decade of his career. He would miss the Euro 2004 due to injury, then miss the 2006 World Cup, which caused outrage in Portugal as everyone expected him to be called up. In 2008, he took part but the team would be knocked out in the first round of the knockout stage, although he barely started in any of those matches. He would completely be left out of both the 2010 World Cup and the 2012 Euros. But as he started to prove his word for Porto and becoming notorious for his comeback to good form domestically, he would start to be given a chance to play for the national team in some friendlies. And by the time the World Cup would come up, he would still not be called up. The next season, he would stay at Porto becoming an even more essential figure for the club, cementing his place there. His return to form would see another one of his ex-clubs seeking to give him an opportunity, which would see him move to Besiktas the next season where he would keep consistently dropping great performances and becoming idolized by the fans as he led the team to win the Turkish league, which hadn't happened in seven years. This would be a turnover point for Quaresma, as in the summer he would be called up to play for Portugal at Euro 2016, where he would become Portugal's super sub, always coming on late and helping Portugal to get the win. He would score the decisive penalty versus Poland in the last 16 and then the only goal in their win against Croatia in the quarterfinals. He'd play only 4 minutes in the semi-finals and in the final he would replace Cristiano Ronaldo who was injured in the 25th minute. Throughout the match would be Portugal's main attacking force, nearly scoring a bicycle kick, then getting across to Pep who would nearly score and the same would happen with Eder off a corner just a few minutes later. Regardless, it would be Eder who would score, leading Portugal to their long-awaited European Champions Trophy. This would cement Quaresma as a national hero, as for the next few years he would maintain his role for the national team as a super sub, who came on late to win the game, mostly through his link-ups with Ronaldo, with whom he still had an almost telepathic connection. One of my favorite moments of the duo came in a game against Egypt, Mo Salah scored as the second half started to give his team the lead, Quaresma would come in late and when the game got to extra time, he and Ronaldo would look like two men on a mission. Two minutes into extra time, Quaresma would get another inch-perfect cross into the box and Ronaldo would add it in to tie the match. By the last play of the match, the story would repeat itself and they would give Portugal the lead. This game perfectly illustrated how deadly this duel truly was. Quaresma spent most of the time since 2016 at Besiktas. His time there was pretty successful, but the most notable moment since was his call-off at 35 years old to the 2018 World Cup, the first time playing a World Cup in his career. At the moment, the most promising news surrounding his name are of a possible second comeback to FC Porto, and I sure hope we'll see him once again wearing the blue and white. Quaresma is a magician, a true artist of the game, making sure every moment he spends on the ball will be as beautiful and memorable as possible. 
Very few times do you see a player have such a close relationship with the ball. I truly believe that it is the single biggest wasted talent I have seen. If players were solely judged by their ability on the ball, it would surely be one of the greatest of all time.